Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is the Top Delinquent, Chapter 34, and this one is titled Leaving the Mansion. Suddenly, the father of the Eda household called for everyone's attention, asking Eda Tenya to come forward so that he could make a speech and a toast to his youngest son. I am proud of both my boys, Eda Senior said to the sea of smiling faces as he held up another glass of sparkling wine in his hand. But today, my youngest, Tenya, has gone above and beyond for a girl who is but a classmate of his. Ida stiffened slightly at his father calling you just a classmate, but apart from that, didn't show any other signs of wanting to correct him. My boy Tenya successfully prosecuted two people today and awarded his friend with over $200,000 in compensation, successfully landing one of those at fault in jail. Gasps of approval and polite clapping rose from the onlookers, and Ida looked down at the floor, unsure of how he should handle this attention. Tonight marks the start of a successful career for Tenya, and I wish him all the best with whatever he decides to do in life. May it be law, Ida Senior joked as he reached out and patted Ida on the shoulder. Raucous laughter could be heard from the auspicious guests as they laughed at their host's wit, tittering amongst themselves as Ida continued to look at the floor. Well done, my son. Ida Senior said tenderly as he squeezed Ida's shoulder. Ida looked up at him and gave him a weak smile before excusing himself and stepping away. Do excuse me, father, but there is a matter of importance I must attend to, he said softly, looking his father in the eye earnestly. Of course, Ida Senior said, slightly confused by Ida's aloof demeanour. But first a toast, he said in a louder voice so that all could hear. To Tenya, his sense of justice, his tenacity and his heart. Ida bowed politely to his father, then turned and bowed to the crowd as everybody clapped and replied to the toast. The soft clinking of glasses following the calls, they spread the cheer amongst themselves. While everyone was preoccupied, Ida made his way from the gathering and headed up the back stairwell to his room, confusion clouding his mind. Why am I being applauded for being a decent human? Should not every person do their best to help with whatever resources they have? From where you lay in bed, now back in Ida's spare oversized clothes, you could still hear the party downstairs, complete with the muffled voices of Ida Senior giving his speech and the laughter and clapping that followed. You rolled over in bed and pulled your legs up to your chest, a tear slipping down your cheek as you lay there alone. I want to go home, but I don't have a home. I just want to be somewhere warm and quiet where I can feel at ease. As the night wore on, sleep finally found you and you forgot all about Ida and how Tensi had said he may turn up at your bedroom door until a knock early the next morning woke you. You moved slowly at first, trying to figure out where you were, then all of a sudden your head snapped up from the pillow and you focused on the bedroom door. Yeah? You hollered in a sleepy voice. Madam, you have school today. Young Tenya has provided us with your school uniform that has now been pressed and ironed and is hanging in the adjacent dressing room, which can be located through the door beside your personal ensuite. You swiveled your head back over your shoulder and focused on the dressing room door. Uh, you called, half yawning as you called out. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Not a problem, madam. The car will be waiting for you at the front of the house. I have been informed that school starts at half past eight and thus the car will be leaving at 8.07 sharp. Um, thanks, but I can walk, you replied loudly. Where's Ida gone? He has already left for school. He disclosed a matter of importance that needed to be attended to immediately at the school, the staff member called. Right, he replied skeptically, hopping up off the bed and walking towards the ensuite door. Okay, I'm going to get ready now. Thanks, bro person. You are most welcome, madam. Good day. You threw a backwards peace sign at the closed door and entered your ensuite, ready to start the day. As you showered, your mind went over everything that had happened over the weekend and you chuckled to yourself when you remembered DF. I am going to have the wildest stories to tell her. Wait, should I even tell her I stayed here? She'll never let me live it down if I tell her. You finished showering and dried yourself on the plump, warmed towel and then wrapped it around you and headed to the dressing room where your uniform had been hung. This is all good and stuff, but what now? Am I living with Ida? Permanently? Should I find somewhere else to live? Your mind continued to mull over everything as you pulled the beautifully pressed uniform on. Damn, they've done a good job, you thought as you looked down at the immaculate outfit. After grabbing your bag that was hung on the rack there, you headed out of the room and beelined for the front door. Yo, the voice of Tensi called to you as you reached the front door. 
breakfast and lunch. He held out two brown paper bags to you and shook the one in his left hand. This one's breakfast. Oh, thanks, he said sheepishly as he took them from him. What is it? Something French, he replied with a small chuckle. Need a lift? He gestured to the waiting guest car. Nah, I'm going to walk, he shrugged. Not trying to be rude or anything, but I'm not used to being chauffeured, so walking's fine with me. I get it, he replied, signalling to the driver of the vehicle that he was no longer needed and the car slowly rolled back to the car yard. Hey, um, Tennessee? Thanks, he said softly, averting your eyes from his. No need for thanks, he replied, smiling down at you. It's Tenya you need to thank. I know, I haven't seen him since yesterday, though. You'll see him at school very soon, Tensi said mischievously, and you looked back into his eyes to try and figure out why he sounded like he knew something that you didn't know. Mm okay. I'm going now, bye, he said, turning slowly and walking down the steps and out onto the driveway that led to the front gates. The guard at the front let you out, and off you walked to school, your heart beating faster with every thought of seeing Eda again, and if it would be weird or awkward between you two. Ooh, I wonder if he's got that confession letter ready. We'll find out in chapter 35, which will be coming tomorrow.